Hey guys, this is the last part showing you how to use TV Paint to start an animated project. From storyboarding to a finished animatic. These three videos are taken from our TV Paint animation course, which covers so much more, including a ton of frame by frame animation lessons, special effects and more. Check out the full course at bloopanimation.com slash TV Paint Animation. And now part three, creating an animatic. So we've made a storyboard and learned how to export and share it. But now, the next step in the pre-production process is to make an animatic. If you have TV Paint Professional, that's really easy to do. So all we have to do is switch over to Timeline View and start clicking and dragging to lengthen the duration of each of our clips. Those ones that have camera moves, I already gave some length, but I just like to give each clip some kind of reasonable length so I can zoom out my timeline and get a sense of how long this is going to actually be. So since I'm extending these scenes, in some cases I need to go in and make sure the layers I drew on are all set to hold as their post behavior. That will make them stay visible for the entire length of the clip instead of just the first frame. We'll go over more about post behaviors in another video. Then we can use the playback controls here, and since we're in project view, it will play the whole project. And based on that, we can adjust these scenes and hone in on the right timing for each one. And hopefully we can make something that kind of looks like a movie. Now to actually get this right, we're going to want to bring in some sound to base our timing on. Obviously, we want the dialogue for the dialogue scenes, so I'll import them to the animatic timeline by clicking this Add a Soundtrack drop-down and selecting Load a Soundtrack. It's added the track, and you can click here to expand it. You'll see the waveform here and some options up here. You can give the track a color group, and you can mute and unmute the track and lock and unlock the track. Then this slider is the master volume for the track. But if you want to make a fade in, you can click the points on this blue line to make a ramp for the volume. And to reposition the sound, you can just click and drag to slide it, or go to the frame where you want the sound to start, right click and choose start here. Then based on the sound, we can time our clips a little better. Mm -hmm, I hear chewing. And you can bring in more tracks and line them up wherever you want. Now, Tony, we've talked about this. You can't be coming over while I'm trying to sleep. You've got the whole forest out there. Unfortunately, you can't change the volume in the middle of a clip. So let's say I want this part of the track to be quieter. I just have to right click and choose split clip to pull out the part I want quieter, and then lower the volume. Mm, I hear chewing. I'm just going to go through and add in the rest of the sound and then time out this animation a little more.
There, so let's see what we've got. chewing. Tony? Now, Tony, we've talked about this. You can't be coming over while I'm trying to sleep. You've got the whole forest out there. Does nobody care about signs? Very funny, guys. Great, that looks pretty good. Now before we talk about exporting a video file, I want to quickly revisit the Publish window. Under the Publish window, we can still export HTML or PDF boards like we did before, but we also have the EDL tab. EDL stands for Edit List. And it's a format for transferring a video editing timeline from one program to another. So if you wanted to do your final edit and sound mixing in a different software, like Premiere or Final Cut, you could publish an EDL, which is a collection of individual movie files for the clips in whatever format you choose here, and a text document indicating the start and end time code for each one. You could then open that in your video editor. That's probably more likely to be done at the very end, after all the clips have been animated. For rough animatics like this, we can just export a movie file straight from TV Paint. Just go to File, Export To. And then, since we're exporting everything in our Project tab, we want to make sure that we're on Project to Display. You can see the project here and scrub through it. Now in cases where we didn't have a background art, which is common in an animatic, you might see that we have a transparent or black background. So to fix that, you can come over here and check background. That adds the background color you have set for your canvas. Over here in the view dropdown, we want to make sure we're actually using the camera's view. Project would show the whole canvas for every clip. And here, we want to make sure we're exporting an animation, not a single frame. If you don't want to export everything, you can mark an in and out point with these buttons, but we do want to do the whole thing. Then, let's set a destination for the file, and then we have different formats. I'm going to use QuickTime. And with the gear button, I'll change the setting here. I'm going to use Apple ProRes High Quality and I'll make sure the frame rate matches our project. Mode here affects whether you can have transparency in your movie. Unless you're animating a single layer that you're going to composite with others later, you can just set it to regular RGB without transparency. Then here we have conversion settings. It's already using our camera settings, so let's just leave that as is. Then there's the options down here. We already checked that we want the background color. Note we'll add in the timeline notes layer from inside each of your clips. We haven't made any yet, so we don't need that. We might want to add in a slate. This will add info like the project name, clip name, time code, date, and author. 
you can edit and format the content of the slate with this gear icon. These make it easier for someone reviewing the animatic to offer notes and keep track of different versions. Pixel aspect ratio and stretch to frame rate only really matter if you're converting the format of the image. We definitely want the sound exported with it. And if you want, you can split the project into individual files for different scenes. We want it all in one though. Then we just hit export up here. And there you go. Our animatic is exported and ready to share. We're almost ready to start the animation phase. But before we can do that, there are a few things we need to change about our project file. We'll go over those in the next video.